Okay, let's open it up to questions. We're gonna do this in two ways. Uh, Frank has a list of questions that were sent in already by people in writing, but I like between questions uh, that are written, we wanna have allow people to also verbally give us some questions as well. So if you want to ask a question verbally, uh, I believe you should try to sign up in the chat room or just unmute yourself and speak up. Yes. Frank, you wanna take over? Yeah, before Frank starts, there's been a few questions coming in the chat. Um, so I'll be the one, I'll ask it alternately with Frank. Okay, thank you, Dr. B, that was very informative. So the first question up that was um, sent in by somebody is, is there a risk or adverse reaction to taking the vaccine when you have a lung problem? That, that's a very important question because a lot of asthmatics have asked about this, people with uh, COPD, smokers, um, but it also applies to people with any other medical problem. What about diabetics? What about people with HIV? What about people with cancer? And the answer is definitely they should take the vaccine. These are people who are at greater risk of having a very bad outcome when they get COVID. These are the people who tend to get sickest. The vaccine has been shown to be safe and it's very effective in preventing severe COVID. So these people, lung disease, diabetes, HIV, et cetera, should be getting the vaccine, yes. Okay, great, thank you, Dr. B. Carlene is gonna ask a question that we got from the chat room. Um, so does the flu vaccine work by mRNA? No, this is the first, these are the first vaccines to work by this methodology. Um, the flu vaccines work completely differently, um, and they don't have anything like this type of thing in the flu, in the flu vaccines. No relation. Thank you, Dr. B. Um, when tested for COVID-19 antibodies, what does that mean? When tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies, what does that mean? If someone tests positive, it means they have had the infection and have their body's immune system has responded by making antibodies, which are these proteins that will help fight off the infection. So while you have antibodies, you cannot get reinfected, but I'm sure you've all heard there have been people reinfected with COVID and that happens after your antibodies wear off. So having antibodies means either you had infection, whether you had symptoms or not, you had infection and responded by making these, or you've had vaccine because the vaccine will also have you make antibodies. Okay, thank you, Dr. B, that was very helpful. Carlene? Yeah, Dr. Berkowitz, you may have answered this already, um, but uh, someone would like to know, um, uh, would you recommend someone to get the vaccine if they tested positive for COVID-19 at the beginning of the pandemic? The answer to that is absolutely yes. If it's 19, because if they had it back at the beginning, back in February, March, April, there's a good chance their antibodies are gone now. And that's why the recommendation is 90 days after you've had the illness, get the vaccine. You don't get Great. lifelong immunity from having COVID. Great. Next question. Can COVID vaccine be given at the PATH Center? Unfortunately, right now we cannot. There are a limited number of places that you can get it. Um, and we are not one of them. The hospital has been giving it to its employees and other staff members of uh, medical offices, but we cannot give it yet at PATH. We hope to be able to in the future. Thank you. Uh, from the chat, we have, what is happening with a child or adolescent vaccine? Unfortunately, these are not, the two vaccines we've talked about are not approved for children. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine is for ages 16 and over, and the Moderna vaccine is for ages 18 and over. So we cannot yet give these to children. We know that when children get COVID, they don't get as sick as adults, although some can, tragically, uh, but they can spread the disease. So we want children to be vaccinated as well, but not with the current vaccines we have. Okay. Does the vaccine interact with my immune system in a bad way? I have HIV, cancer, and chronic kidney disease. Okay, so someone with uh, those, any of those underlying diseases, and certainly with all three of them, definitely should get the vaccine. There is no way that it can harm your immune system. Um, what it's doing is allowing your immune system to get to work and make those antibodies. 
it works best in HIV people who have CD4 cells or T cells that are over 200, which most patients who take our medicines now have. Almost all of our patients who take their medicines regularly have CD4 counts over 200. And we know those people are able to make antibodies to this virus. Great, thank you. Um, from the chat, um, we have, if someone is getting the vaccine now, should they, should they want due to shortage or wait until the second doses are guaranteed? That's a great question. Um, the, they had hoped to guarantee, everybody who's gotten the first dose should be guaranteed a second dose so far. Um, but as you, you all heard, we've run out of vaccine in New York. So 26,000 people had to have their appointments canceled uh, for today until more comes in. We're hoping to get more in next week. I haven't heard any news this morning, um, but I would not delay getting the vaccine. The sooner you get the first dose, the better. The second doses should be made fast enough that we'll be able to get everybody a second dose on time or possibly a couple of weeks later. And as their booster doses, this is okay to get the second dose a little later. The preference is to get it within four days of your target date. So for Pfizer, 21 days, either four days early or four days late is okay. Moderna 28, four days early, four days late is okay. But if the vaccine can't be made fast enough, getting it a little later is going to turn out pretty well as well. The best thing though is get the first dose as soon as you can. And as I haven't mentioned it before, for those of you who want to get the vaccine and not sure where, the state has a very good website. You just go to COVID Vaccine Finder or Google, where can I get COVID vaccine in New York? That site pops right up and it explains how to go about making appointments. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, next question, please. Dr. B, you answered this question, but in case somebody came late, um, I heard that there are tracking devices in the vaccine so the government can monitor us. Is this true? How can we be sure? Okay, the first part of that question, is this true, is the answer is no. How can we be sure is a question that, is, that really has no answer. Um, you can't be sure. No one is looking into these vaccines to see if someone put tracking devices in them uh, because it just seems like such an odd thing to even consider. It's on the QAnon website, the these, uh, organization that postulates all sorts of bizarre conspiracy theories. Um, and this is another one of those. Um, Bill Gates has actually been accused of being responsible for putting these tracking devices in. And he's publicly said, of course, that, well, he would deny it and say, I have no interest in this. He said, but Google and other companies already have all the technology they need to track anybody wherever they want to uh, through their cell phone. So this is not a reason not to take the vaccine. It's not there and no one's tracking you through the vaccine. Great, thanks, Dr. B. So com coming from the chat room, we have, what if someone tests positive for antibodies 90 days after the infection? Should this person wait to get tested? Should this person wait to test negative or get vaccinated even though the test is positive for antibodies? Yeah, they should get vaccinated uh, because it's around 90 days where we know that the antibodies will start to decrease. And it's not recommended to be testing everybody for antibodies all the time. There have been enough people tested to know that this is what happens, that in 90 days they start to decline in most people. So even if someone does have antibodies that go out further than 90 days, that's not a reason to not get the vaccine. Don't check antibodies and get the vaccine after 90 days after the illness. Am I on mute? Um, you're on mute. Great, thanks Dr. B. So this is the last write-in question that I have and there's uh, maybe three more from the chat room. Uh, you addressed this, but I'll ask it again. I am very skeptical. I am very skeptical in taking the vaccine as a woman of color, especially when I know about the Tuskegee experiment on people of color. How can I trust that the vaccine is not another example of an experiment? I mean that that's a, a serious uh, issue that many people have. Um, the Tuskegee was a horrible situation, as we talked about, but. You have to remember that was started 90 years ago in a different time and place. It didn't end until 50 years ago, but there are many, many safety measures in place now to make sure that doesn't ever happen again. 
no one's experimenting on anybody with this vaccine. The experiment is as designed was you get placebo or you get vaccine. It's the consent forms were signed. It was all the ethics boards passed this. Um, what, you, what, what you're getting when you get a vaccine now, if you get Pfizer or Moderna, you're getting a vaccine that was studied in either 44,000 people in the Pfizer trial or 30,000 in the Moderna trial. No one's a guinea pig now. We know it works. We know it's got a good safety record. This is not experimenting on anybody at this point. Great, thanks, Dr. B. Okay, so I have just three more questions from the chat room. So if anybody wants to submit another question, now's the time. Dr. B, is it too early to know if this vaccine has any effect on reproductive health? A very interesting question. I don't think there's any data on this. Um, as of many studies, pregnant women were excluded from the trials on the vaccine. Um, but we don't know about women who are not yet pregnant about the future. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to expect that it would. Um, patients, the people in the study trial will be monitored for the future to see how that goes. I'm glad you mentioned this because it gives me the opportunity to say that although pregnant women were excluded from the studies, um, all the major obstetric organizations in the country are recommending that women who are pregnant get the vaccine. Uh, and the main reason for this is that women who are pregnant who get COVID can get much more serious disease from COVID than people who are not pregnant. Uh, the safety factor looks very good. And as of now, um, already tens of thousands of pregnant women have been vaccinated with the new vaccines. Should I ask that? Great. That, great. Thank you, Dr. B. Um, I'm not really sure what this question is asking. I'm just going to read it to you the way it's written. Okay. Can you get your antibodies after losing it? Usually not, unless you get reinfected. If you, if you have COVID, you make antibodies, and then they're gone, they're not coming back, unless you get reinfected or you get vaccine they usually won't, will not come back spontaneously. Great, thank you. This is the last write-in question. So if anybody has a question, please, now is the time. Dr. B, can you please explain the simple graph again? Okay, I don't know if you wanna go back to that slide, if you can, it's the sure. sixth or seventh slide with the, it's almost a cartoon, it's so simple. This one, yeah, I love that slide. Um, you can just see the, over time, the bottom black line goes across a four month period, but it's at seven days where you can see the separation between the black line or the number of COVID cases in people who got placebo. And the red line is the number of COVID cases in people who got the vaccine. So the vaccine group after four months, if they've gotten the two shots, had nine patients get it, and the placebo group had 162 patients uh, On YouTube, get COVID cases. I see you have a mic. Very straightforward. You're forward. Okay. How come I can't hear him? Any other questions? Frank and Carlene, have we run out of questions? We can open it up to the audience if they want. I think there were two more questions in the chat. Um, once someone gets vaccinated, is there any reason for someone to get a nasal swab test? If, well, if they get symptoms, yes. Because again, the vaccine is not 100%. You can still get COVID if you get it. So certainly if you have symptoms suggestive of COVID, you should get a, a, a PCR nasal swab test. If you need a test for other reasons, like you're going to have a surgical procedure and testing is needed, or you're traveling or returning from someplace, you should get tested even though you've had the vaccine. Uh, as other people have put it, the vaccine is not a get out of COVID jail free card. You still need to mask, you still need to distance, and you still need to be tested in the appropriate circumstances. I guess one more question. What happened to the um, people that got infected after the first dose? Should they continue with their second? there's conflicting opinions on this? The answer is yes. And the question is when? So um, there is the, the, source, the source that makes sense to me is that if you get COVID after your first shot, 
you should wait 90 days and then get vaccine because you'll probably have antibodies for at least 90 days. There is another source though, uh, the CDC quotes another source that says you should do your isolation period. And after your isolation period is up, then you should get the second dose. So I think the CDC is probably gonna have to come to a, a single conclusion on this. And I think it's going to be wait 90 days, but definitely yes, get the second dose. Just a matter of when. You have another one, Madeline? Um, let's see. Oh, Natalia's got a question there. Yes, this vaccine protect against the new strain? A very, very important question. Um, there are, uh, unfortunately, a couple of new strains. The one that's gotten the most publicity is this B117 strain that was originally found in the United Kingdom, and it's probably all over the world by now. There are mutations in that strain, so it's a little different from the first one. But luckily, though, it seems that those mutations are not um, extensive enough and different enough to prevent the vaccine from working. So the expectation is that for that mutation, which is the most common one right now, the vaccine will work. There's a little more concern about another mutation that has arisen in South Africa, which is a little bit more, more uh, it's changed more than the original virus, and we don't know yet if the vaccine is gonna work for that strain. Um, Dr. B, did you answer, we had Petrovna in the chat that asks, is it possible for your antibodies to come back after being re-exposed to COVID? Well, we did answer that one. If you're, if you're not just exposed, but reinfected with COVID, your antibodies will come back. Thank you. Dr. B, do you think the vaccine will have any effect on people with long-term effects of COVID-19? No. No, I think Natalia is referring to what we call long COVID, which are people who have had the disease and, and survived the disease, but have persistent issues with their lungs, their heart, their muscles, et cetera. This is a, a serious problem. Uh, the vaccine will probably uh, have no benefit for those symptoms. Its main benefit will be preventing those people from getting reinfected with COVID, but it won't help with the long COVID symptoms. Thank you everybody for attending and thanks to uh, Carlene and Beth and Frank for making the technology part of this easy for me. That was me, Dr. B. Oh, and Madeline. Not Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was Frank okay. for, the, for the presentation. Okay. All right. Have a okay. good weekend, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye -bye.